G'day guys and gal. Warhammer takes inspiration from a lot of real life things in history, whether it be Ultramarines being inspired by ancient Rome or the Emperor's children being inspired by registered sex offenders, Warhammer does it all. If a Warhammer character, faction or race is inspired by someone or something badass, they will generally also be a beast. The Macharian Crusade saw the Warhammer equivalent of Alexander the Great conquer so much territory for the Imperium it would have made the Emperor's bony face blush. Hence when you have a Space Marine chapter inspired by Sparta, you know they're going to cause some serious trauma for the enemies of the Imperium, and the allies of the Imperium, and the Imperium itself. Yeah, these guys are worse than the Marines Malevolent. Not because they're bigger douches, no. No one is a bigger douche than a Marine Malevolent. It's because of how wildly effective they are. If a malevolent marine wants to ruin your day, there's a good chance you'll be sweet because they'll probably struggle to get to you. If a minotaur wants to ruin your day, you may as well just break your own legs and hope they take pity on you. Spoilers, they probably won't. Today we'll go over who the minotaurs are and what their deal is. We'll also have a look at their very mysterious origins, as well as what's going on with their own version of Leonidas, Asterian Moloch. Let's get into it. Long before the 41st millennium, a humble scientist that went by the name of the God Emperor of Mankind uh, decided that he was bored and that the Milky Way needed to get milked. Hence, using Dankar science, he created 20 demigod super soldiers called Primarchs and used their DNA with even more dank science to create 20 legions of super soldiers called Astartes. The Minotaurs were not one of these 20 original legions. See, every space marine in the galaxy can trace their lineage to one of these 20 as, since an unfortunate event called the Horus Heresy occurred, the legions were broken up into chapters and different foundings. Some chapters are like, Oh yep, no worries, I'm nice, I look like chocolate and I have a big schlong, I'm definitely a salamander successor. And some are like, Oh ni xin chao ding da, I am definitely a right scar successor. Whereas other chapters, such as the Blood Ravens and Minotaurs, are super unique, and all their records of their original lineage have been lost or sealed. This can be for a variety of reasons. For the Blood Ravens, it's because they're likely a Thousand Sun successor, which is extremely heretical. Whereas for the Minotaurs, it's likely because the Imperium messed with the Emperor's Space Marine template to create them, and saying that though the Minotaurs also have a decent chance of being from a traitor gene seed as well. As a rule of thumb, it's super heretical to mess with any of the Emperor's original designs, unless your name of course is Belsarius Call, then it's fine. Either way, it would only be in recent times that the Minotaurs, as we know them today, would emerge. To be clear, they did also exist in the 38th millennium, but the canon of that is questionable, as back then they were insane berserkers with one of the fuggliest and most difficult to paint styles I've ever seen. The modern day Minotaurs are a lot more cold and calculating. They also don't make me consider suicide whenever I look at their paint scheme. While some Space Marine chapters are specialised as Siege Warfare or Range Warfare or Close Quarter Warfare, the official specialisation of the Minotaurs is killing other Space Marines, something they're pretty stoked about. Whenever there's a Renegade Space Marine chapter, the Minotaurs will beeline their full force, massacre 80% of the chapter, steal their gear, and make them beg for forgiveness. They're literally fueled by Space Marine tears. During the 8th Black Crusade that Abaddon launched, you know, having failed 7 of them already, it was the Minotaurs who backed up the Custodes to wipe out a force of Night Lords and Iron Warriors who threatened Terror itself. After this, they were hand chosen to become the attack dogs of the High Lords of Terror themselves, only obeying orders given to them by the High Lords and return, being given the best weapons and gear available. When the previously mentioned Macharian, the Alexander the Great of 40k, died, the regions of space he had taken over fell into civil war. It was the Minotaurs who spearheaded the attack onto the heretics and slaughtered the traitors. During this Makarian heresy, there was a lot of confusion about who was on what side. Loyalists fought Loyalists just as much as Renegades did. The Doom Warriors and Inceptors, two Loyalist chapters, were caught in a fight with each other. The Minotaurs came in and beat the shit out of both of them, forcing the Doom Warriors to retreat and the Interceptors to suffer a humiliating defeat. Now the Interceptors are an Ultramarine successor, so kicking their ass is like punching the rich kid from your school in the face. His daddy is going to get very angry and will try and sue you, which is all well and good until you activate your trap card and inform them that your dad is a corrupt politician so they can't do shit to you. Needless to say, the Minotaurs are not welcome in Ultramar. 
Another incident was when, due to Titsnitch pulling a fast one, numerous loyalist chapters were turned against the Imperium, including our good, but unlucky boys, the Lamenters. Well, being unlucky already sucks, but being unlucky and also being the target of the Minotaurs sucks even harder. Whilst the Imperium and the Successionists fought, the Minotaurs beeline for the Lamenters and kicked the shit out of them, decimating their chapter and stealing most of their war gear and a number of ships. If you haven't been able to notice by this point, I'll make it very clear. The Minotaurs are really, really good at killing space marines. So what about their Spartan King, Asterian Moloch, arguably one of the most powerful space marines to ever live. A marine who is extremely old, always fights on the front line, has been reported dead multiple times yet always returns in complete fighting form. Well, Games Workshop have kept him pretty mysterious. He never removes his helmet, which has given rise to a number of theories about him and how he's so powerful for a space marine. There's literally a quote from a named custodian who was a beast in combat being like, bruh, I'm not even sure I could beat this guy. For context, Custodes are known to cut through space marines like butter. Well, first off it's thought that Moloch isn't a normal space marine. It's thought that he received even more gene seed and experimentation than normal, prolonging his life dramatically and making him an absolute beast. That's theory one. Theory two is that Asterion has undergone extensive cybernetic rebuilding, making him a space marine terminator. This would also explain how he survives near-death experiences and also why he doesn't take his armor off. His armor is a part of him. Theory 3 is that he's actually a custodian or the result of a custody space marine hybrid. This is backed up by the fact that his spear appears to be a remixed version of a guardian spear, spears only custodians can use. And finally, the theory that I find most interesting is that it's been confirmed that the Minotaurs employ a mind washing technique, which basically lets them upload data and personalities to their space marines' brains, giving them extremely fast recruitment rates. What I think could happen is that when Asterion dies, they upload a backup of his memories and abilities to the brain of a powerful Minotaur. They then equip them with Moloch's war gear and bam, there you have it. He's back. This would also explain why he's so powerful. He's had years of combat data spread throughout multiple Moloch's uploaded into him. Also explains why he's such a massive dick. That kind of mind rape ain't gonna come for free. Now none of these are confirmed to be true, but regardless of why, all that matters is that Asterion will kick your ass down a well if you get in his way. In more recent times, the Minotaurs have gotten themselves into a bit of controversy, killing some Sisters of Silence and even a Custodian. See, when Gulliman took over as Lord Regent of the Imperium, he flushed the swamp, swapping out most of the Highlands of Terra. They weren't super keen on this, hence hatched a plan to overthrow him. Now a human attempting to overthrow a Primarch is like a white person trying to dunk in basketball. It's just not going to go well. There was a big fiasco which eventually led the Minotaurs and Custodes fighting. The Custodes obviously killed numerous Minotaurs but were able to suffer one death. Before the final fight can begin, a legendary shield captain of the Custodes prepares to fight Moloch, and after assessing him, cannot find a single weakness that he can exploit, and feels the closest thing a Custodian can to feel concern. Before they can fight however, the situation is resolved, the traitor lords are killed, and everyone goes on their merry way, pretending like nothing ever happened. The Minotaurs, due to the High Lords sucking them off, got early access to the Primaris DLC, hence had Primaris Minotaurs running around before the other chapters. These guys are very much pay to win. After the hectic custodian killing heresy that everyone pretends didn't happen, the Minotaurs joined the Indominatus Crusade in full strength. They were recorded as encountering some thousand sons who they swiftly bent over and destroyed from behind with the power of their throbbing bullcocks. We haven't heard much about the Minotaurs since that scene, however with the coming of the Indominus Crusade novels, as well as the Minotaurs recent popularity and lore, it's not hard to imagine we'll see more of the Spartans soon. Because of their attitude and overtly dickheadness, the Minotaurs don't play nice with others. They are known for high rates of friendly fire, not attending war councils, and randomly rampaging through war zones. The Minotaurs have killed Imperial Fists, Blood Angels, Grey Knights, Sisters of Silence, Custodians, and many more loyalist factions in the Imperium, purely either due to misunderstandings or simply because the offending party was in their way. Games Workshop have been really clever in the way that they expanded the different Space Marine chapters, allowing them to have nearly endless fun and creativity. I love covering the more unique and especially badass Space Marine chapters, and the Minotaurs were no exception. And that does us for today guys, the Minotaur Space Marine chapter in Warhammer 40k. I really enjoy the lore of a loyalist chapters who are assholes, especially when they are Spartans. 
If you have another Space Marine chapter you guys want me to talk about, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do about it. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 gives you access to a boatload of warm hentai, and $10 gives you access to the premium magical hentai calendar, along with other benefits. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more aggressive kick down well content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.